Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week. The last couple of episodes have been Top 10 Mocks of every two weeks, but I'm going to try to get back onto that weekly basis uh, next uh, next Sunday. This is the episode where I basically show off the coolest custom creations. I happen to see people building in LEGO all around the world. Links to everybody I show and more are in the description below. And before we jump into the very first model, the custom creation that came up in the web store, the digital instructions that went up in the web store, is for the LEGO TIE Strike. Riker, built by Lightsaber Productions, and in conjunction with Jarek's designs of other TIE Fighters, we have the latest TIE model built specifically for in-atmosphere combat and mostly seen in Rogue One. It's got an amazing wing folding function that's very well hidden, and if you want to check out the instructions, you can find the link to our web store www.brickvault.toys in the description below. And alright, now let's jump into the top models of the week. This is a really fun one from Aaron Newman, it looks like it was also a collection collaborative build with his friend Tristan, and the title is First Contact. Even though there's not too many bricks in this build, there's a lot to glean from this scene. You can tell that the city that this UFO is hanging over looks to be old world. It could be hundreds, if not a thousand years old uh, of a city with a wonderful micro scale uh, construction. And the UFO itself looks like it's got a big tree and maybe even a micro city underneath a biome at the top. So there's kind of a lot of information conveyed here and it's just a fun build it's lit well i like the graphics in the back they're very subtle and it says in the comments that it just took him and his friend three hours to put something like this together which is incredibly impressive now what didn't take three hours probably took i don't know 10 times as long is the build from i live or i live and the title is roller coaster we're looking at something that feels a lot more like a fig scale city block or couple of blocks with some very large modern looking sky skyscrapers integrated completely with these new roller coaster pieces or relatively new roller coaster pieces sort of reminds me of that ride that I saw in Vegas but also in a strange way it almost feels like this could be a weird retro futuristic uh, way for people to get around the city not only does the roller coaster itself actually work and work quite well I think but the builder here went to the next level and lit the whole thing up now it feels really futuristic and it is certainly a wonderful scene to behold. Moving down to number eight, if we're counting down, no particular order was assigned from best to worst. I just count downwards in any order I like, doesn't matter. From Richard Van As, we have the Lego Jurassic Park T-Rex Breakout Mock. Recently, Lego made the giant UCS Jurassic Park set with the gate and the very, very large brick built T-Rex. You can see that the main T-Rex build here is uh, very closely built from that model. Might even be the same one, maybe slightly modified, but this designer decided to recreate a different scene from the movie with a very large explorer and Grant distracting the T-Rex from uh, attacking the kids that must be just off of the uh, off screen. The ripped gate looks amazing. I like the larger built jungle uh, bushes and trees, and I think he got the scale really well with the brick built version of Grant, the actual character. It's awesome to see people integrating their own custom creations in with larger Lego sets, and this is probably one of the best examples I've seen this year. Here's another massive build. Not all of them are going to be massive, huge models, but this is another big one. It's called ATAT -AT Maintenance Hanger by Tasten Man 77 I'm very confident that this is a full minifig scale ATAT uh, -AT walker. It looks very close to the ones we have in the studio. And this must be somewhere inside a Star Destroyer or possibly a Death Star or something. Can't really tell. But there is a massive crew working on and maintaining these big walkers. My guess is that they have lots of weird little kinks and things that need to get tweaked after every time they go out uh, into a battle. It's a really complete looking scene. There's lots of fun details that just make up the sidewalls and things like that. Even though it's all gray, there's still a lot of fun visual things for your eye to latch onto, which is a sign of a good builder, especially when working such a monotone medium like what we have here. In order to make such a large complete scene, I don't know how many bricks this took up or how much space how much of a volume footprint this leaves, but it's a wonderful dedication to detail, and I highly recommend you check out all the links in the description below if you want to see more awesome picks like this. Next up from John Hall, we have the P65 Tomahawk. This guy's got some amazing Lego planes. They're very much based on a World War II era style, but at the end of the day, they're still very fantasy based. The wings kind of arc in and forward, similar to, uh, I would say, a spaceship design, yet the body cockpit 
propeller and tail and of course details and decals match up with what you would have seen from a World War II era fighter. It's wonderfully rounded over. The cockpit feels somewhat proportional. It feels a little bit like a snub fighter, a little fat maybe, but that look remains consistent throughout the tail, body, and wings so the whole thing kind of comes off as a chubby fighter but still proportional to its nice wide angles. My favorite bit of detailing are those shoulder pad pieces from Nexo Knights used as uh, the bit of the exhaust on either side of the engine. And next up is a brick built figure from a designer we've never talked about before. From Hong Jun Yun, we've got Hawker, the man who hunts with the hawk. If you call that a hawk, I'd say it looks more like a giant eagle. Such a cool design though. The bionicle face piece used for the actual head looks very, very human and kind of evil. And I don't know how the builder managed to get this to look the way it does, but with the combination of torn cloth pieces and just some different jagged bricks, the the idea of this guy wearing lots of warm uh, skins and warm clothing really comes off quite effectively and you get the impression that this is a man from a different era and probably living off the land. It's an extremely interesting concept. I really like the way this figure turned out and this next build comes from First Order Lego. It's called a work in progress right now but my guess is that this is a Tatooine based build or possibly just a, uh, a building set in a stark desert landscape, but it does feel a little bit Star Wars-y or Tatooine-y. You don't see models from this setting usually lit up so much, which is, a, which is a nice plus. And we've had many a conversation here in the studio as to how we would like to make buildings look in a desert or Tatooine setting ourselves, because tan on tan uh, is a difficult thing to get to look good in Lego bricks and I like the fact that this building is just so incredibly detailed and worn down by the elements on the outside that smooth or even studded sand detailing along the bottom could probably wash up against this building quite well and still contrast in a way that makes everything look interesting still. Lots of fun details to notice here. I can't wait to see what this final uh, mock looks like at the end. And now we're technically in the top three from Joxon. We have a brick built figure here called Halgvod's the Purifier. This is one of the most well realized brick built figs I've seen from 2019 so far. There are just so many flowing lines that connect properly along the legs and hips and there's a nice smooth transition from there along the torso to the chest with a pretty consistent color combination of the of the silvery tones as well as a bit of that gunmetal too. The head in particular is extremely well built. Love the detailing there that makes up absolutely every corner of this piece and that was an extremely good idea to use those old toothed Technic pieces for the mouth on the teeth. It's that's a, literally a toothed piece and they make up awesome teeth details. The rings for the eyes give a weird creepy kind of look and the stance is incredibly dynamic. Just such an evil, creepy looking figure. And this is certainly a model that if you are not very familiar with how Lego bricks look or you haven't paid attention for a long time, you'd be hard pressed to know that this actually all came from Lego and Bionicle pieces. Now to change gears entirely from Vincent Q, we have the beauty of the Arctic Circle. I like this just because I've seen a million bear builds, but this one just looks different. It feels different. We have a nice friendly looking polar bear with some wonderful proportions, a nice combination of slope pieces and bricks with studs that have changed angles, like how the legs in the front have attached and also in the back. And it's just a nice, easy scene with a build that looks relatively simple and easy, but my guess is there was actually a lot of troubleshooting in order to get this thing to look the way it does. Just like when you see a professional athlete do something on the screen, it looks a lot easier than it actually is. That's sort of the impression I get with this polar bear. All right, moving on to the last model of the week from Carter Witz. We have uh, his mech build from Mech Monday. This is a pretty common thing amongst builders every Monday. They'll try to put out a mech build if they can, and I'm a big fan of this sort of post-apocalyptic soul survivor world that we have here. And this tripod just has this way of feeling elegant and rugged at the same time. The stance is incredibly dynamic. It feels like it's got a lot of energy, like this thing could just start running at you at high speed or shift to the side very, very quickly. Yet the angles are rugged and you can see some rust detailing, lots of weaponry, and 
and his accompanying survivor plus gigantic beastly dog just seem to fit in this world incredibly well. My only question is how did they not uh, pick up that chicken for roasting later? And guess what? That is going to be it for the top 10 mocks of this last two weeks. Remember guys, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. There's a ton more links in the description below if you want to see other builds that came out within the last two weeks as well. My guess is you'll probably find some of those to be your favorites and not the ones that I personally chose. Remember, it's all really opinion based at the end of the day. And all right, thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Hey guys, just popping in really quick, letting you know that we do have a Lego web store, www.brickvault.toys, where we sell the instructions, the PDF step-by-step -step instructions for some very, very high quality mocks. I highly encourage you guys to go check it out if you wanna help support us here at the channel or the designers that spend their time building some really, really amazing creations. That's www.brickvault.toys. Thanks a lot for hanging out and uh, we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.